Hi everyone, and welcome to another Figma prototyping tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating an interactive breadcrumbs component in Figma. So breadcrumbs are the top navigation set of uh, buttons that basically shows you where you are currently located in the website hierarchy. With this interactive component, you'll be able to easily change the text of all these buttons and choose how many levels are displayed. Additionally, you'll be easily able to customize the appearance of both the button and the logical divider. And as usual, if you'd like to save time and support the channel, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now, let's get started. So what I'm going to do first is choose the text tool. And I can do that by pressing T on my keyboard. So I'm pressing T and then clicking once and I'm going to type in button because that's what we are going to be creating first. We're going to create a button that will be set within uh, these breadcrumbs. We're going to use a different font instead of Balboa. We're going to use Roboto, which is one of the most frequently used fonts uh, on the web in general. And we're going to go for Roboto semi-bold. And the font size, let's go for 18 for now. Then I'm going to press Command Option K or you can click on this icon on the top bar of Figma which will turn whatever object you have currently selected into a component. So Command Option K and as you can see it created a component. Uh, this component is gonna have a variant, a second variant, that's gonna be called Hover. So um, to create a variant of a component simply click this icon on top that says add variant. I'm going to add a variant and this variant is going to be called hover which I'm going to specify right here. So let me type in hover, right? So we have a component with a property called property1 which we are about to change to state, right? Instead of property1 and the property called state is going to have two values, default which is this and hover which is this. And default and the hover are going to be the states of our button. So we will now specify the colors or let's say the behavior, the visual change of the button when you hover over it. Let's say that for the first state, the default state, it's gonna be slightly transparent. So instead of black, uh, the text is gonna be also black, but with some kind of transparency, let's say, the opacity will be set up to 40%. And also additionally, we want to make sure that this button is going to change size with the text. So let me just select the default date and press Shift A to add an auto layout. And I'm going to do the same here with this variant selected. I'm going to press Shift A to add auto layout. Why are we doing this? Well, it's simple because when we actually use instance of this component, and then I'm going to type in some nonsense, but I'm going to change the length. The overall width of the whole component is going to change with that. So uh, that's why we are setting up this to be an auto layout. And additionally, I'm going to select both of these texts directly, right? Be careful not to select the variants like this, but the actual text within that variant. Then I can press this icon, select all two matching layers, which will select both of these text objects in all the variants that we have within this component. And I'm going to go over here to content with both of these selected and I'm going to click create text property. And this text property is going to be called, well, it's just going to be called text. And when I now create this property and I'm going to use an instance of this component, you can see that I'm able to change the text right here. So let's say button text, I'm going to modify it right here, which is going to be reflected in the text and with both variants, right? So that's the reason we have set this up. And right now we are ready to start uh, preparing some kind of interaction, which means I'm going to go to prototype and then connect the first variant to the second variant. And under interaction details that will pop up here on the right side, I'm going to specify that this is going to happen while hovering. Right, so while you are hovering, this state is gonna to change to this state. The button is gonna become non-transparent, 
right? Fully opaque from transparent black to fully visible black. While hovering, change to state hover. And we wanna go for, let's say, smart animate 100 milliseconds, something like that, so that there is a bit of transition. And let me actually use the pen tool. And with the use of a pen tool, I'm going to create an arrow that is pointing rightwards. And it's not gonna be magenta, but rather it's gonna be black. It's gonna be way bigger. So let's go for like six times 12 something like that maybe a bit less maybe four times eight yeah i think that works where this is going to be wrapped inside an order layout so i'm selected the arrow and press shift a this is going to have no horizontal padding and also no vertical padding for now and i'm going to also select this then go over here to create a component from this this component is going to be called divider which means with this component still being selected, I'm gonna press Command R and type in divider. What I'm going to do next is go over here to assets and use an instance of the button component right here along with the, an instance of the divider component right here. And then what I'm gonna do is select both of these and press Shift A to create an order layout that will contain the button and the divider. Then I'm going to select all elements within this auto layout, which is the button and the divider. And I'm gonna duplicate that bunch of times. And then also I of course need to reorganize these layers so that uh, it's the button divider, button divider, you get the point, right? So that um, the divider actually serves as a divider. You can see that I think, for example, now would be nice to change the appearance of the divider. I think we could go for a softer color to actually match the appearance of, of this button. So let's set the opacity of the color here to 40. You can see that now it matches the, the appearance. And what I'm going to do now is uh, turn this into a component as well. So with this selected, First, I'm gonna rename this to breadcrumbs, and then I'm gonna turn this into a component. And now we will use component properties to enable a toggle button for switching on and off different levels. So this is level one, two, three, four, and five. And we're gonna select within the breadcrumbs component, we're going to select this divider and this button. And then under a layer, I'm going to click this icon that says create Boolean property. And this Boolean property is gonna be called show level five, right? Show L5. And the default value is gonna be true. But then what I'm gonna do next is select this group of elements, which means the fourth level, basically, right? And again, go to layer and create a new property. And this one is gonna be called show level four. And then over here, I'm gonna do something similar. Show level, level three, show level three. And then here, show level two. Create property, show level two. And create. With this first button, I'm gonna change the text to home. This text is gonna be changed to level one. This text to level two. This one to level three and this one to level four. And I have just realized I got the numbering wrong. So this means changing the numbers, um, increasing them by one. So let me just update this level four and level five. All right, so this is the correct, these are the correct values, right? Now what you wanna do is select the whole breadcrumbs component and then go to properties and click this plus icon. What we are going to do is select expose properties from nested instances, right? I'm gonna click this, then I'm gonna check all these buttons, right? All these buttons. And now let's prepare a test frame. So I'm gonna press F on my keyboard and create a frame that is 1000 by 600, right? I'm gonna name this test frame. And then I'm going to go to assets and use an instance of the breadcrumbs component right here right here we are going to customize our values so for home let's type in let's just type in website.com right so that's going to be our most uh, logically most important level so that's our home page basically right then under level two we're gonna say um, let's say electronics and then level three is gonna be smartphones level four is going to be um, iPhones and then level five is gonna be one specific iPhone so let's say iPhone 13 Pro right iPhone 13 Pro so 
That's, for example, a very specific use case with, with a website that sells electronics, right? And then as you can see, when I duplicate this instance, I can hide the fifth level, the fourth level, or I can even hide the third level or the second level, which is probably not going to be frequently used, but uh, since we set it up in this way, you can see how, how flex, flexible it, it actually is, right? So now um, I'm going to change the appearance of this button, of this divider, sorry, and I'm gonna, gonna decrease the opacity to all the way to around 14 uh, so that it's very, very subtle, right? And I think I'm also gonna change the color of the button from gray when it's inactive and then to, let's say, blue when it is actually active. So normally you'd see this and then when you hover over individual category, over individual level, you will, uh, you will the button will turn blue. Let's select a test frame and launch the prototype. So this is what you currently get, a few breadcrumbs. I can hover over individual categories, over individual pages and you can see how it turns blue, right? I can also specify right here that I would like this text to be underlined when I hover over this and when I update it uh, from a single place right here, you can see it's going to be updated across all of these instances, right? And what you can then do actually is, let's say we duplicate this frame multiple times. Let's say we're going to have three pages. Let's say we're going to have a page for electronics and then we're going to have a page for uh, smartphones and then we're going to have a page for iPhones, right? I'm going to hide the level five so that you get these, right? You get one page for electronics, one page for smartphones and one page for iPhones. Let me align this uh, to the top left corner. Let me select all of these and then move them a bit. And let me use a text tool to create a headline that will say electronics, electronics. Then I'm going to duplicate this, paste that here. This is going to say smartphones. And then this is going to say iPhones. So what we now can set up is actually select, for example, on these two pages, select the electronics button. And then using the prototype panel, I'm going to connect that to the first uh, frame. So on click navigate to test frame. Then I can do the same also for smartphones right here when I, I connect the smartphones to this page. And then also, of course, the electronics, I can change that, connect that to the electronics page. So now when we launch the prototype again, I can also add the start flow starting point here and remove it from this frame and ignore this. Um, let me relaunch the prototype. Let me also duplicate this. Yeah, so duplicate this and create a way that we can get to smartphones. So smartphone and then we're going to have iPhones, iPhones and the smartphones are going to lead to smartphones and iPhones are going to lead to, of course, iPhones and here the same. You can ignore this. I'm just setting up an infrastructure for demonstration purposes. So right now when I'm on the electronics page, I can go to smartphones and then iPhones and then now I'm going to demonstrate the purpose of the breadcrumbs, right? When I hover over these breadcrumbs, you can see that it highlights just as we have defined right here along with the underlining. And when I click on smartphones, I actually get back to smartphones. I can also go back to electronics and then go back to smartphones here through the navigation and use these breadcrumbs for, for navigation purposes as well. So right now I am on iPhones, smartphones, electronics. And I can just go back and forth with uh, using these breadcrumbs. So overall, this is a very low fidelity prototype, very low fidelity uh, tutorial as well. This is intended to just show you the basic logic behind such a component and how to set it up on your website. And as I said, if you'd like to download this component and use it in your own project and also support the channel, make sure to check the link in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a like if this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.